buying quality clothing, weapons and equipment for medieval reenactment can be very hit and miss when you get it online. So many times I've had to buy equipment or uh, helmets and armour and what's actually been received is not what they sold me or what was described in the listing. So in this video we're going to do a review of the Medieval Fight Club Paladin Helmet. Hi guys, it's Ben from Medieval Mayhem. On this channel we do a lot of videos about DIY, costuming, weapons, equipment and all sorts of things that are relating to the medieval period. Uh, so great the ideas for this. Uh, if you're interested in uh, live action role play games, medieval reenactment, um, whether you might just be an enthusiast or if you're interested in things like the Society of Creative Anarchism. We also do videos about the medieval cultures, the religions and also the major wars and conflicts of the period. I found myself very frustrated recently. Uh, I'd realised that over the last sort of year or so I'd bought myself and some of my friends some what I thought was some really good uh, equipment and some helmets and stuff but often the helmets that are sold for the hundred or so dollar mark uh, from particular well-known you know websites they, they tend not to be very well described as to what you get and um, the quality tends to be pretty lacking so I decided to invest in a much better quality helmet for myself and uh, I did a lot of research online and I came up with this one this suits my period particularly well uh, I, I sort of focus on mid 12th through to the early 13th centuries and this is, is perfect for uh, what I'm looking to do. So I did a lot of uh, research around some of the Osprey books and this kind of thing. I looked at um, what a lot of the English knights of the period would have been wearing and how they would have been equipped. And uh, helmets such as this were, were quite predominant. This is, um, if you like, a transitional helmet. A lot of the knights of the period were moving away from the nasal helm, uh, looking for something um, which was better and more protective. Um, and this is sort of what they came up with. This is a very common helmet throughout the, the Western uh, knights of, of uh, what is today Germany, France, Belgium, uh, Italy. Uh, and particularly sort of England and Wales and these sorts of periods obviously under a very heavy Norman influence of the time. So this is the Medieval Fight Club Paladin Helmet. It cost me $236 which I thought was actually a really good investment. When I received this I was just nothing but impressed with it. The internal circumference is 64 centimeters and the external circumference is 70 centimeters. Okay so what that means is you have plenty of room for an arming cap and a chainmail coif underneath the helmet which is exactly um, the way it would have been. An accurate diameter is 205 millimeters. Front to back is 226 millimeters. The front height is 310 mil, whilst the rear height is 140 millimeters. The eye slits are 20 by 72 millimeters. Now this is actually one of the really important things. And what I've noticed in a lot of the cheaper helmets is the eye slits tend to be much bigger. Uh, I don't believe that would have been accurate at all because what the eye slits uh, were there to provide protection against stabbing injuries from whether it be daggers or swords or spears or whatever and therefore the eye slits had to be quite small obviously this is going to reduce your um, peripheral vision and your situational awareness as a knight but what it does is it vastly increases the protection so probably one of the main ways that people would have been killed you know, in, in, uh, in a medieval battle would have been a stab injury through the eye slits um, or certainly finished off that way um, the weight of the helmet is 2.95 kilograms and the overall helmet is, uh, well, the, the top of the helmet is made from 14 gauge whilst the front is made from 12 gauge steel and this is really good because it means that the, the place where you're likely to actually receive blows is, is far more, um, provides far more protection than would otherwise be provided by uh, a lot of the lighter gauge helmets which you tend to get from websites such as eBay and so on which are usually the sort of 18 gauge or 20 gauge and uh, I just don't think that A they're realistic or B they're going to provide much protection and even during 
medieval reenactment. You know, people get a bit carried away sometimes and, and things get away from them. So this is something that I've, I've really impressed with. The quality of the workmanship is, is really, really, really good. In terms of value for money, this is right up there. This is um, a really, really good helmet. As I say, quality workmanship, quality materials. It comes with a, a, a um, sort of a greasy film on it. You're going to want to clean that off before you use it. But one extra feature that I, I hadn't actually appreciated until I got it was you also have an internal padding um, as well, which is going to make um, it, it again much more comfortable to wear. For those of you who are in Australia or in, in um, climates that get quite warm, the other thing that you'll notice is because you don't have this section at the back, your head doesn't get as hot and that's really, really important. Um, medieval reenactment in Australia is, is strictly limited really to sort of four or five months of the year where it's cooler and uh, the reason for that is is people do end up going down with heat uh, and and that's not a pleasant experience at all honestly guys this helmet um, I, I genuinely rate as a 9 out of 10 I'm so happy with it I really do think it's a it's a good choice it's a really good investment and I thoroughly recommend it Okay guys, um, please like, subscribe and share and I will catch you in my next video.